When I'm asked how the real estate market is right now in Madison, Wisconsin, in order to give a clear picture of what it looks like, I usually have to give examples of what it takes to get an offer accepted. Just to say it's hot, it's a seller's market, the inventory is really low, mm -hmm. doesn't cut it. Mm -mm. So today we're going to share with you what it takes to win in the Madison, Wisconsin real estate market. So stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome to our channel, Living in Madison, Wisconsin. We are your guides to everything Madison, Wisconsin. I am Joe Marks. And I'm Crystal Marks. And if you are wondering what it's like to live in Madison, Wisconsin, we make weekly videos. So hit the subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell. So what does it take to win in the Madison market as a buyer right now, right? We all wanna know that. Also, what should you be looking for as a seller when reviewing offers? Right, so we're gonna be speaking mainly from the buyer's perspective, what a buyer needs to write in their offer to get it accepted. The sellers, this is really helpful information for you to know, to keep an eye on so you know what to look for when offers start to come into your house. So we're gonna rifle through these pretty quickly, so buckle up. Okay, number one, which is most obvious, but it's off over asking price. Now you may be asking how much more. This is something you're going to want to determine with your agent, of course, but what we are seeing regularly is fifteen to thirty thousand dollars or more over the asking price. Right, you might be like, holy cow, I don't feel comfortable doing that. And that's going to be, again, something you'll have to determine with your agent how the price, uh, how the home is priced. Mm -hmm. may determine how much you're willing to go over. If it's your first offer, it may be harder to do that, but again, if, if it's a house you like, you're probably gonna have to do that to get it. All right, number two is offer substantially more for your earnest money. Typically right now, 1% is about what you would do historically for earnest money, but in order to really get the seller's attention, people are doing three to 5% or maybe even more of the purchase price for earnest money. And another thing that you can do is offer some of it to be non-refundable. So if for some okay. reason the deal falls apart, the seller would still get a portion of it. So that's attractive. Yeah, that's really attractive for a seller to know that you're gonna you're gonna stay in the game. You're not just gonna walk away for any reason. So earnest money is number two. All right, number three is to use an escalation clause, which is basically you're willing to increase your offer price to a certain amount that beats out another offer. So you can put a limit on it. So you're like we're willing to go up to this much, but not over. Mm -hmm. um, so it gives you a look you know, peace of mind that you're not gonna have to like get out of hand with your price. You can say, this is what we're willing to do and limit it there. One of the things you wanna make sure that your agent checks on if they're using an escalation clause is if the listing agent is familiar and comfortable with them or not. Uh, yeah. If they're not and they don't really understand them, it can cause confusion and can almost be worse to have it in there than not. So make sure if that's something you wanna do that the, you check with the list agent to make sure they're comfortable with them. Number four is limit or remove common contingencies, such as inspection allowance, right? So right. the buyer covers the first so much of the repairs. Right, and that and that number has gone up as of late. We used to be able to get away with a thousand or two thousand. Now it's three to five is common, okay. or even more. I've heard as of late somebody did ten thousand, and that's going to be again your comfort level with what you're willing to do. But the more, the better to strengthen your offer. Mm -hmm. Also appraisal allowance, right. right? For the buyer to accept an appraisal value above, what are you seeing right now? Right, so basically if it comes in at least to this amount, which common right now is 10 to $20,000 buffer. So let's say you have an offer accepted for 300,000 and you were comfortable with 10,000, you'd be okay if the appraisal was at 290 or more. Gotcha. All right, number five is to shorten your contingencies. And the most common we're seeing with those is to decrease the time for your appraisal contingency. Generally, it used to be 30 days for both your appraisal and your financing. If you can get the appraisal down to 10 to 15, and if you can get your financing contingency down to 10 to, or 10 to 20, um, some lenders, you might be thinking, how can lenders do that? But there are definitely some lenders that can. So if you're connected with a really strong local lender that can get through your financing really quickly, that's a huge win when it comes to what you can put into your offer. Sellers know within a couple of weeks or three maybe um, yeah. that your offer, your financing is solid and approved. So number five is to try to tighten up those 
contingency deadlines. So we have a question for you. Have you bought or sold a home lately? Even if you're coming from a different market, we're really curious what your experience was. What did it take for you to win as a buyer or for you to win as a seller? Please put that in the comments below. Okay, number six is a fast closing. Get it done, right? <laughs> Offer to close the faster the better if it works for the seller. And then also, if you shorten contingencies, this will allow for this. Right, so number five, like we mentioned, tightening up the financing will allow you to close earlier, which for a lot of sellers, especially if they're in a hurry to get out, it's is great. really appealing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, try to get that closing done quickly. Mm -hmm. All right, number seven is to offer the seller a per diem penalty if you don't close on time. Mm -hmm. So what that could look like is if for every day that you close late, you pay them $100 or more if you want to strengthen your offer even more. So what that does is if you are tightening up the timelines and you're closing, let's say within three weeks, they're, they're going to know if you put this in there that you are serious, you are confident that you can actually close early. You're not just throwing in a quick closing to make it look good to get your offer accepted yeah. and later you're going to be delayed. Got some so, skin in the game. Right, right, exactly. So putting in that term that you're going to be willing to pay them if it doesn't close on time really strengthens your offer. Number eight is offer a quick close with post occupancy to the seller. So this allows you to close fast, you get those funds all freed up for the seller, mm -hmm. but then they get to stay a little longer, right, and right. move their stuff out in a more timely manner. Right. Exactly. So they're they're able to have the benefit of closing, getting the funds for their next place, but still having time to move and or find their next place. It's very nice of you. So, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's up to you with that if you want to give that to them for free, which would strengthen the offer even more, or kind of a rent back or program. a rent back program per day. This is what we're we're willing to do this, but we need to have cover some of our costs too. Mm -hmm. So you're, in that case, it's more of a convenience. Yeah, Both it's a great, good. yeah, mm -hmm. really great term. Sellers are really appreciate that as an option. They don't necessarily all need it, but it's really great. So that'd be something else for your agent to check in to see if that's something that would be valuable to the seller. Mm -hmm. All right, number nine is something we haven't seen too much of, but I'm anticipating seeing more of this year as inventory is super tight. And that is to increase money in the seller's pocket without necessarily increasing your purchase price. Mm -hmm. And how you do that is you offer within your offer to cover some of their closing costs, which could be the title insurance, some other closing fees. You could offer to waive the pro property tax prorations or a portion of them. You could offer to pay some of the commissions that they're paying the realtors. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with that. Um, but I would say make sure you check with your lender to make sure that you're able to put that in the offer and you're not going to have any underwriting issues. And something else to consider, maybe you just want to say we're willing to pay up to this amount of these things. Okay, yeah. So like kind of put a limit on it, make you feel a little bit more comfortable that it's not going to get out of hand with the amount. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's another option that's possible. Again, not seeing a lot of, but it could make a difference. Number 10, last but not least. For sure not for least. For sure not least, yeah, you guys. Like extra exclamation points after yes, this one. Yes, 10 is really important. Yeah. Use a local lender. Right. Many of which who are willing to call, email, write the list agent to advocate for the buyer. Right, yeah, that's an extra step that a lot of great local lenders can do. It just gives the seller another touch point of like, hey, the, the lender reached out to me to let me know you know, these buyers have done everything that they need to to qualify for this loan. So, and again, this is, can't stress this one enough, you know, coming from other markets, you may have a, a, a relative that's in town, you may have somebody that you are currently working with in another state that worked really well for, but in this market, we know as agents who the good lenders are, who get things who gets things done on time, who does a really good job. And that is just another thing that you can do to get yourself in the winner's circle <laughs> when writing an offer. So I can't stress it enough. You may be thinking, yeah, but what about, please. Trust us. Trust, <laughs> trust the real estate agent that they know who the good lenders are. It's gonna cause you a lot less headache. Mm -hmm. Well, there you have it. Now you know all you need to to win in the Madison market. So if this video was helpful to you, please hit the like button. And we come out with weekly videos, so please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell. 
And if you want to learn some more right now about living in, moving to Madison, Wisconsin, here are a few other videos that will be really helpful for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.